Hi everyone. So I know it's been a minute, but I have been extremely busy with school and work and I have to um, plan this walk for my job. So it's been pretty crazy, but um, I'm back for some updates, major, major updates. So first of all, I've been promising you the video on my AMH, um, your anti-malaria hormone. So when I first went for a consultation, with my reproductive endocrinologist. They wanted to check my AMH, um, even though I was going for male infertility. Remember my husband had had a vasectomy. They still wanted to check my AMH, just check my ovarian reserve. So um, the first time I had it checked was December the 6th of 2016. And at that time I was 41 years old. And my AMH at that time was 1.99, okay? That was considered in the normal range for my age. Um, so I was glad it wasn't, you know, low. I had heard of women even younger than me, theirs being like 0.3 and 0.4 and things like that. And I know if they're below a certain level, they don't want to stem you. So they didn't have any problems stemming me. And so remember, um, December the 6th, 2016, I was 41. My AMH was 1.99. Now I had my AMH repeated um, March the 16th of 2018, and at that time I was 42. So March the 16th, 2018, this is a year and a half later, I had my AMH checked and it was 1.25. So it went from 1.99 to 1.25. So it was, what, 0.74 drop? So I was like, okay, I guess I could expect that in a year and a half. Um, they always talk about there's a steep decline after 41, and I was going from 41, and on March 16th, I was getting ready to be 43 in like nine more days. So that big decline from 41 to 43. Um, at, that, at that range, it was still considered within range, and I was still considered um, in the 76th percentile and okay to stem. At that time, I thought about um, taking some supplements, and I had been reading about all the supplements, and I did get the book. Um, it all starts with the egg. And so I was continuing to take my prenatal vitamin, and I also added to my routine vitamin D. Our vitamin D always tends to be a little low. It should be between 30 and 100, and mine was like 22.5. And at one time, it had been like in the single digits. That was years ago. So. Um, I did work on that, got that improved. So when I checked, had my vitamin D checked then, 2018, it was like 22.5, which means I needed to get it to at least 30 for the minimum range. But of course you want to be somewhere in the middle and your vitamin D is always low when you're coming out of the winter months. Um, and it does affect your metabolism. It does affect fertility, things like that. So I definitely recommend, I'm not a doctor, I'm not giving medical advice, but I always recommend to my patients that I see at least a 2000 unit maintenance dose of vitamin D daily. So I did start, like I said, I was taking my prenatals. I was taking my vitamin D 2000 units daily. I started taking CoQ10 daily. I was also adding folic acid to my um, prenatal. And I also started DHEA. And I got this one off of Amazon. And this one was, um, let me see. This one was actually one, um, I'm sorry, 50 milligrams per capsule, so I was taking two a day to try to get 100 milligrams of DHEA. And um, when my husband first put on his Facebook page years ago that we were getting ready to do fertility treatment, they insisted I take Geritol. Now we were trying to let them know that we were doing IVF for male fertility issues, not for female, but they were like, you know, his friends, there's an eight year age gap, so his friends were like, if she takes Geritol, she'll get pregnant. So anyway, I started taking, after about a year or two later, I was like, let me go ahead and try the Geritol. So start taking the Geritol. So I requested to have my AMH checked this year because um, there are several that I have met that are stemming. And, and then I've had friends my age and older get pregnant. So I was like, okay, I feel like I'm still within, you know, childbearing years. So, now my dog is in here coughing and heaving and going on. What's wrong with you, girl? 
You all white. You all white, baby girl. Okay. So, um, so I did have it checked in April of this year. Now, remember, I had it checked last March 16th, 2018. I had it checked April the 18th of 2019. My result last year was 1.25. This year, my result was 1.30. A year and a month and some days later, and my AMH went up, not down. So, and the only difference in my regimen were So, I do, and I didn't believe it at first, I definitely believe that you can increase your AMH. And when I, um, and, and this puts me in the 82 percentile, um, when I asked my clinic about stimming again, they actually disappointed me and recommended, no, they didn't want me to stim again. And I think it's all based on statistics. I'm 44 and you know, statistics are, um, you know, very, very small percentage that I would make it to a full term live birth with my own eggs. So, um, I was disappointed because I'm like, I still, my labs still look great. My AMH looked great on May 10th. I had an exploratory lap to check me for endometriosis or any issues or obstructions, any utero obstructions. Everything was negative but my clinic still will not stem me. So I have looked at um, other clinics such as CNY in Atlanta, that's closest to me where I am. And I've heard others talk about SHARE. And then there are some other clinics up in um, mid North Carolina, more in the Triangle region that I think work with older women. So to me, I was disappointed because as much as I try to do to keep my health status um, optimal, and the fact I didn't present to the clinic with female infertility issues, I was disheartened that with all this that I've done, you know, all the testing, whatnot, that they still would not let me stem for another cycle. Um, when I would stem before, my results were actually pretty decent for my age. I would get between eight to 12, um, eight to 12 eggs from the follicles. Um, the last time I stemmed, they had thought about retrieval on the 4th july 4th last year today and they actually did not retrieve until july 5th and the last scan prior to trigger i had um seven follicles on one side and four on one side when they went to retrieve they were not even able to get the seven off the other side they were only able to retrieve four from one side and only one of those were mature so i think i um, maybe triggered late and that of course that led to a late retrieval so I should have re probably retrieved on July 4th of last year versus July 5th when I did um, so I've definitely learned a lot and I'm going to do a video on um, definitely going to do a video on things that I know now that I would do different when it comes to IVF um, guys feel free to comment and let me know how you would feel if your clinic wouldn't let you stem again and your labs were okay and how do you feel about medical tourism have you been a medical tourist um, what clinics are people traveling to the most um, is there a age that you feel like women shouldn't stem anymore I would love to know that um, so definitely comment and um, I have some more videos coming with some more updates. I hope you guys enjoy your fourth. I had to work this morning, but I am off the rest of the afternoon. So I'm going to go get my orange theory workout in and do some organization of my Ipsy packets and try to have a great day. See you guys soon. Bye.